Okay, this is going to be your real estate crash prediction for the next three years. Because I've been doing a lot of studying and I've been watching a lot of videos and people have been talking about the real estate crash, but they haven't been talking about the factors that are going to go into making this crash probably one of the worst real estate crashes on record. Because CoreLogic, and you can Google this, says that mortgage delinquencies are the highest they've been in 20 years, which includes the last recession. So right now, mortgage delinquencies are much higher than they've ever been. That's one factor. But here's a big factor that many people are not talking about when they're making their mortgage and their real estate videos. They're not talking about the number of permanent business closures. There was an article that 55% of the businesses on Yep have permanently closed. 55%. This is going to be a big factor in what's to come because I've been looking at the unemployment rate and the unemployment rate which has come down from the 6.6 .6 million people filing unemployment claims at the height of the pandemic to the last 10 weeks, it's been over 800,000. Last 10 weeks. This is going to continue because I was at the Apple store and I've never seen it that sparse ever, as long as I've been buying Apple products. I mean, I've never seen it that empty. Never, 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 never. One of the things that you're going to see, and Apple has like 200 billion sitting on cash, they're gonna be fine. However, there are many businesses that are not gonna be fine. There are many businesses that are going to have problems. There are many businesses that are going to continue to suffer. So we take the mortgage delinquency rate, we take business closures, and we take a constant level of unemployment. There are people right now who are okay. They will not be okay six months from now. They're gonna lose their jobs. He, the husband, the wife, even if they have like six months emergency fund, they're gonna run out of money and they're gonna be looking at this house as a big albatross around their neck. Let's go ahead and look at why housing prices are going up because there's a limited inventory. Many, many people have taken their houses off the market. So this has increased prices and people are going crazy. There are bidding wars, but there's less inventory. And let's go ahead and have this high housing crisis conversation. There were not enough houses, even in good times, to serve the need of people needing houses. We were already short. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna suffer downward mobility, who are currently homeowners right now, they're gonna become renters in the future. And we're gonna see a big shuffle, big, 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 big shuffle. Because those who have equity, who are able to bail out these mortgages and save their credit, they're gonna become renters. So we got business closures, high unemployment, and mortgage delinquencies. And what's gonna happen is, this this is going to start in 2021. Let's go ahead and talk about the big E word, evictions. Evictions and foreclosure. Because there's going to be so many, this is going to start in 2021. Regardless of what happens from the election standpoint, it, it doesn't matter. These mortgage companies still need their money. You know, Congress can't like wave a magic wand and say, hey, you don't have to pay your mortgage company their money. It's going to start in 2021. And it's going to really start roasting 2022, 2023. This is going to go on for three to four years. That's why I feel that this is going to be the worst mortgage crisis that wasn't started by bad fiscal policy. It was started by this pandemic. Nevertheless, the end result is going to be really, really bad. So you're going to see it start in 2021. They're going to start the foreclosures. They're going to start the evictions. But because there's so many, the courts are going to get clogged. You should have been evicted in January and you're going to be able to chill out in your apartment to July, maybe August, maybe October, because there's going to be such a backlog. So it's going to take some time for all of this to work its way through the system for it to come out. Now, once it starts working its way through the system, then there's going to be a vast inventory of houses hit the market. And that's when prices are going to go down. And this is when you're going to start to see the effects of the crash, because right now the factors that are in place to make this happen are happening right now. It's just real estate takes time to unwind. And this is why the next three years, if you want to become a real estate investor, 
you should be in the market now. You should be in the market now because the people who are in the market, actively doing deals, who are doing research, who are looking at certain things, this is where the deals are gonna be able to come. So if you are a real estate investor, you should be in the market right now so you can detect these changes as they happen. This is how I see it. This is what I see is going to go down because there, there are many people who are not talking about the number of businesses that have closed. There are many people who are just kind of glossing over there and that's going to have a huge impact because these businesses that have been closed, the employees and the business owners no longer have a source of income. It's just going to be really, really ugly. Like I said, it's going to start in 2021. It's going to take catch heat 22, 23, probably this may extend out to 2024. Here's some of the factors. Delta is getting, you know, the airlines are getting ready to lay off like for across the board, 100,000 people. We're starting to see the ramifications, the long-term ramifications, because when this whole thing started, one of the airline CEOs, they had predicted that this was going to go on for three years because we were dealing with, quote, the first wave. Now it's the fall and, you know, and we're about to deal with the second wave. So until a vaccine is put on the market and also <laughs> the vaccine is controversial because there's people who've already gone out on record like, I ain't taking no vaccine. You can't make me take a vaccine. We're going to be dealing with pandemic related related issues for the next two to three years. And this is going to impact unemployment. And that is a key comparator because right now you could have a good job, you could be making money, you could have a great credit score, and you easily qualify for a mortgage. Six months from now, that's gonna change for a lot of people. There's a lot of people who are in really good financial position right now, but as we go deeper and deeper and deeper into this, and this is when the crash is going to start. It's gonna start in 2021, it's going to catch fire 2022, 2023, 2024, and you're gonna see a dumping of a lot of properties on the market because these people cannot afford these properties. They they lost their job, unemployment has run out, and they don't have a clue to what to do. They, they have nothing going on. One of the things that you know people need to look at, and this eviction thing is going to be brutal because the eviction thing is coming because Congress can do a no eviction moratorium. They can only do that for so long. And the, this is the thing. There are people who are getting further and further behind because like when you get to, maybe you can dig your whole self out of the hole at three months mark but we get to six months eight months nine months or a year that you own your rent and you have not paid a dime these folks are going to have to get out there's you know we're, we're going to probably have a, a dramatic increase in homeless people and this is something else too and this is already a sign of what's going on so many adults have moved back home. Remember my video, they're moving to Big Mama's house. So many adults are living with their parents or grandparents. It is not ridiculous. I actually know six people that have moved back home. Personally, these people I actually know that moved back home because they could not make it out here in the world on their own and they needed some help. Let's go ahead and talk about the folks who don't have a Big Mama. Where are they gonna go? What are they gonna do? What's going to be the prognosis for them? And this thing is about to get ugly. 2021 is going to be a worse year for many people than 2020. And one of the things is because just looking at the calculus of this, because I may adjust my real estate investing timeline to 2020. Two, because I think that's when the real deals are going to hit the market. Like right now, there are no deals. First time homeowners are taking it on the chin. They can't afford anything. They can't get in. They're being outbid and that's going to change. However, for the first time home buyer whose economic prospects change, they could be in the position to get a mortgage and then they can slide out of that position to get a mortgage. Because here's the thing, you know, a few years ago, I was doing these recession talk videos. I've said this recession was coming. I did not predict the pandemic, but I knew we were gonna have a recession because of economic indicators. And one of the reasons that this pandemic was so economically brutal was the economy wasn't that healthy to begin with. That's the, that's the key problem. You know, right now we're having a big shakeout. We're having many people reposition. We're having a lot of businesses go out of business and also commercial real estate is taking a hit. And then what's gonna happen is the foreclosures, the evictions and the bankruptcies. This is going to be epic. And once all this stuff starts rolling together, once the unemployment, the evictions and the foreclosures, once those three things start to happen in mass, 
this is when we're going to see pri property prices go down. And for those people who are trying to get their first real estate property, hopefully you stay in the position to be able to get it because what's going to happen is mortgage standards are going to tighten up tremendously. You're going to see a revisit of what happened in the 2008, 2009, 2012. You're going to have to be a one. You're going to have to have a good job and you're going to be, you got to have money and you're going to have to be set to get a house. So this is how I see it going down because the eviction, the foreclosure, the unemployment, the mortgage delinquency, you put all those things in the same box and it's like chaos, regardless of what the Congress does in terms of a stimulus package, because I assume I'm not hundred percent sure that Biden's going to win, but it looks like it. But once again, if Trump stays in office and the Republicans keep the Senate, we will not see any juicy stimulus packages in the future. And essentially they're just going to let the country limp along and work its way out of this stuff on its own. Now, if the Democrats get in and they get the presidency and they get the Senate, you will see generous stimulus packages. You will see a prop up of the unemployment benefits. You will see all of these things which will help, but they're not going to stop the economic carnage that's about to happen. It's just not going to stop it at all. And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. So what are you to do? Once again, go over to Savage Finance, get your long-term emergency fund, get your short-term emergency fund, get your family operating account and get yourself financially solvent because this thing is going to be with us into 2021. It is, it's not going away. It's going to be rough. It's going to be rough for a lot of people if you're not positioned, because I keep talking about this and it's kind of funny, like the sugar baby website, that has become an economic indicator because every day I go in there, I see scores and scores and scores of new women. Bam, they're just running there. And I see scores and scores of older women and I see single moms. This is telling me that the economy is far, far, far from healthy because all these chicks or going on this site to try to sell the thing that they think that they have a value. I, I feel that before this is over, you're gonna see way more people on these sites, more people trying to do whatever they can to scratch up some coins, to make some money. It's going to be really, really dark. It's gonna be chaotic. I know that there are some other people who are putting up these cheerful, rosy expectations. I just want you to remember, who told you there was not going to be a V-shaped recovery? I had Trump. I had everyone that's like, oh, and then they were like, oh, it ain't going to be a V-shaped recovery. Who told you that seven months ago? Because once again, I know business and businesses need customers and businesses need financing and businesses need proper capitalization. And in this environment, there are many businesses who don't have proper capitalization. Their customer base has been cut in half, or in some cases, their customer base has been reduced by 75%. They were already struggling. There is nothing good that's gonna come out of this. So we're gonna be dealing with this for the next two, three years. So if you're a preserved person with good credit, good cash flow, you're going to be able to come up on some real estate deals. I'm going to predict toward the end of 2021 or about 2022 and definitely 2023. You need to be in the market. You need to be looking. You need to study your real estate marketplace so you know what's going on in it because every real estate marketplace is not going to perform the same. Remember, evictions, unemployment, high mortgage delinquency, business closures. That's that's a lot for an economy to take on the chin and be OK. That, that's a lot. Essentially, right now, there are four million people 90 days behind on their mortgage. Four million people. And that number is going to grow as more and more people are laid off. And see, this is the, the game layoffs, delinquencies, layoffs, delinquencies. There are many good folks who are really in a bad situation. They've done nothing wrong and they're just going to suffer because the employer is going to go out of business. They're not going to be able to find another job. And then they're going to be in a situation where they're not going to have any money coming in. They're not going to be able to service their debt. They're not going to be able to pay their debt. And it's going to be really, really bad. So for those of you who are in the position, because like if you're just kind of hanging on, don't do this. The price of the corporate toolbox, November 1st is going up. So you need to get in. And what is the corporate toolbox? The corporate toolbox teaches you how to set up a proper holding company structure, how to make it tax efficient, 
and more importantly, the real cooking with gas elements of the holding box of the corporate toolbox is how to start a business and how to get customers. Because even though all of these bad things are happening, there's still people out there with money in their pocket. There's still people buying stuff. There's still customers out there. There's just not as many. And this is why you're going to have to really, really pay attention to your marketing. And you're really, really going to have to work on customer acquisition, customer satisfaction. So the links below, go ahead, get that. And I will see you guys in the next video.